Let's continue a story well, that we've been following because we haven't been doing the investigation and the call out on the story. A journalist called uh, Ian Wishart who runs an online man- magazine called Investigate and you may have heard of before. We've had Ian on a couple of times because Ian did a very simple thing. In the wake of Cyclone Gabriel, when all the pearl clutches were saying climate change, Ian said, let's have a look and see if it is. Let's see if it is the worst storm ever to hawk, uh, hit the Hawke's Bay, and, and like Niwa and all the scientists were saying. And what um, Ian found out pretty, pretty quickly, through just a little bit of research, was that no, Cyclone Gabriel actually wasn't unusual in terms of its severity by barometric pressure. So then what did Niwa do? And I, I might add, Niwa still won't come on here for an interview to discuss this. Niwa then moved the goalposts late last week and they said, oh, or early this, they said, no, it was about rainfall. And our research shows that this is a severe rainfall event and more severe and therefore it's linked to climate change. Uh, what does Ian do? He goes and has a look at rainfall says, no, 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 your data's wrong there too. Now, there is now something of a campaign going on by Greenpeace and people like Lucy Lawless and the Green Party to cling on to the lies that we were putting out about climate change. And the best they can come up with now in general articles is there is a theoretical possibility that climate change may have had a 20 to 30% influence on Cyclone Gabriel. But in some ways, the damage has already been done. TVNZ has already done a, a, an opinion poll that says, do you, back more, um, do you back more urgent action on climate change and carbon neutral and stuff because of Cyclone Gabriel? And the whole debate has been based fundamentally on lies, uh, on the fact that men can have babies when they can't. So to catch up with the latest twists and turns, we're joined again, and I'm happy to have him with us, uh, by Ian Wishart. Ian, how are you, mate? Good morning, Sean. i got to tell you, as a spectator sport, this is a hell of a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> because you yeah. put, they put up a straw man, you knock it down, and then the scientists and the pearl clutches come back at you with a whole new theory. Yeah, they do, and the uh, the shocking one today is, is sort of really developed overnight. Is the study that came out yesterday saying that, as you said, uh, twenty to thirty percent of the uh, rainfall in Gabriel was caused by climate change. And that study was uh, headlined by a uh, scientist called Dr. Luke Harrington from Waikato, uh, who's been working with NIWA and um, a group overseas called the World Weather Attribution Network uh, out of London. Yeah. And uh, they had done a rush study, as they call it, on Cyclone and Gabriel and came up with these conclusions. Now, I have just discovered uh, late last night, I was my attention was drawn to a post that Dr. Luke Harrington made on February the 17th on Twitter, three days after Gabriel had rocketed through the Hawke's Bay. And what he posted was, and this is again as the lead author on this uh, on the study, is that some of the places most affected by Cyclone Gabriel saw two-day rainfall totals more than double the previous record. Data only goes back to 2009. But the events it catches were historically significant. So here he is on February 17th saying that Cyclone Gabriel's two-day rainfall was more than double the previous record. The previous record, the, the study that he came out with yesterday, picks uh, Cyclone Gabriel's uh, total two-day rainfall is about 600 millimetres of rain. The previous record is actually held in 1938, the big flood in Esk Valley. One metre of rain dropped. Oh. Not 600 mils. They are way out. He was totally unaware, as the lead author of the study, of the historical significance of previous records in that area. And now, what was his name? Shocking. Dr. Luke Harrington, was it? Yeah, it is. Where's he based, it's Ian? Waikato, as, as mm. far as I can tell. Uh, yeah. So... It's 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 and and they were he worked with the Niwa team and and putting the stuff together. So what he's done is he's gone into the Niwa database and this comes back to the stories we've been doing now for two weeks. Niwa bar- Niwa's Niwa. database sucks. Niwa database sucks. He punched in the details for that area, and the best he could come up with was 2009 as the most recent data. And he got all excited and said, "Hey, wow, Gabriel's total is double of the previous records we've got on here. Must be a big storm." Not knowing because Niwa's database wasn't that capable of telling him that more than double Gabriel's, or nearly doubled Gabriel's total was dumped on 1938. And, and 
1936 and back in 1924, uh, I think, and also yeah. back in 1897. So it, it's got a long history of being flooded. So the, 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 the take-home point that I'm making out of this is that NIWA's main database, the one that they claim to use, is utterly useless. They can't get historical data at their fingertips and they're making stupid statements online and publicly that have no backing in fact. It's just a, it's just. And what we then have, Ian, is a national debate based on lies, on inaccurate information. It yeah, it's, it's, it's an absolute shocker. I mean, the mainstream media are reeling from this because the other interesting thing about yesterday's study is that as a result of the work that uh, we've done with you guys and, and the, the publicity that the, the NEWA database problems have had, is that uh, various media covered in different ways. TV1 took it on the chin and went with it big time. Uh, the Herald, uh, although they wrote the story, it was buried. You wouldn't have known they'd done the story at all unless you actively yeah. searched for it. Um, and some media just didn't touch it at all. Uh, the people, the media, I think, are starting RNZ, to... RNZ are just running the NIWA line hugely, Radio New Zealand. Yep. Yeah, they are. I've just, I've just tweeted Media Watch saying, how come you guys aren't up, up at this like a robber's dog? Because they're normally they're the first to call me a climate denier and away they go. Um, yeah. But the, the, the reality is this, is that the, the whole house of cards is collapsing. But you, you can't have a lead author on a major study that, that came out yesterday that claims to have looked at uh, New Zealand's past, only went back to 1979, mind you, that's it, first shocker. Uh, but secondly, that he's tweeting three days after Gabriel's gone through, he still couldn't get through NIWA's database, the historical records, the accurate historical records for that, that place. And that's yeah. the, the entire Ian, it seems to me, though, no, this, this is more, this is now more than a, a scientific debate. This is a debate over whose propaganda to believe. And, and, and NIWA and, and Greenpeace and, and, and the Green Party and various other wokesters, they aren't really interested in the science, Ian. They're interested in controlling the narrative. And you are being very irksome to them with those pesky little facts you keep coming up with. And they don't seem to be used to that. So this is really not really an argument over the science anymore, Ian. This is an argument over whether or not they can keep lying to people. It is, and that's what I say. The house of cards is collapsing. I mean, I've I've had trolls from Greenpeace and elsewhere on the on the Twitter feeds and mm. debates with them. Often they block and run, but um, the reality is is that the narrative is falling apart. It would be good if Neva had done the research in the past and 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 as we know, stacked up the evidence. They haven't done it, and this latest study, this this, this study that's been heralded around the world, has made the news on CNN, BBC, Washington. But it's Post, all a lie. It's world. wrong. It's a lie, and they didn't even know. The lead author on the study yeah. did not know three days after Gabriel went through from using yeah. the NEWA database. Where do you get a, your rain, a, those a rainfall measurements you've got that show it's all bears? Where did you find that, Ian? <laughs> Here's the irony. I found that on NEWA's historical weather events database was one of the few that they'd entered. So <laughs> if they'd used their own, <laughs> they used their own no, database. No, that's too good. That is too that good. Is classic. So let's get back to some facts on the issue at hand. Cyclone Gabriel was not, in recent historical complex, uh, the most severe storm that they've had. No, it wasn't even a top ten storm. Okay. Cyclone Gabriel's rainfall was not the most severe that's ever been. Nowhere near it. It's about half of the previous record. Given the time context of Cyclone Gabriel there, there is no existing scientific evidence to suggest that Cyclone Gabriel was caused by... Uh, global warming or climate change because of man acti man, man's activity or the human race's activity? No, there's no evidence. And uh, that's the, the bottom line from this, is that uh, to, to see evidence of climate change affecting the weather is more extreme, you'd have to look back at the historical data properly and have a trend line. The, the and there is no trend line. This is there is no trend line. And, and, we were, and our climate was 20 times worse back in the 1800s. 20 mm. times worse. Yeah. We had a bowler event every single year. Ian, uh, where not, can they go next? Where can they go next with this? Because you know, once again, it's like watching an America's Cup race. They try and tack to cover well, you, and then you jive. <laughs> I think I, I think the thing that is amusing me in this is that uh, what it's showing is, is a, a very strong facade that's backed up by the mainstream media. That never issue a press release. The media take it all seriously and report it faithfully. When you dig behind the facade, it's like the Wizard of Oz. The, the, the guys about three inches tall. 
yeah. um, and there's, there's no threat at all. They, they just haven't done the done the work. I mean, yeah. there was there was study yesterday, this, this big study yesterday, here all across the country and around the world, is built on sand. It's just a fraud, yeah. in my opinion. Ian, has any other media company apart from the platform asked to interview you or, or been highlighting this? Only alternative media. There's been no major media coverage of this at all, and uh, they know about it. Believe me, they know about it. Um, and I think you can see that from the, the mixed coverage I got yesterday, the story from the New Zealand media. Some reported it, some didn't. Yeah. There was some concern in the in newsrooms at major editorial levels that uh, me was been making them look like idiots. That's the, the other take-home point. The media need to feel the pain on this because they are relying on people who cannot do the science. Yeah. Well, we got a mainstream media that believes men can have babies too because they've all signed up to Rainbow <laughs> Tiki. And, uh, so it's a weird old world we live in. Look, I don't mind having you back as often as we can. Can I just say keep up the great work? It is fascinating and in some ways humorous if it weren't so serious to watch. So thanks for being with us again. All the best, take care. Cheers. Ian Wish out there from Investigate Magazine. Yep. All the stuff you're reading about having to do something about climate change because of Cyclone Gabriel, it is all rubbish. It is like saying that cyclones can have babies, really. Um, and this is a major problem. We are making dumb decisions and having dumb national debates based on lies. Sean, why the hell aren't you heading the National Party? Might put a cat amongst the pigeons but we'll get rid of the madness because I'm not a politician, Brendan. I'm a journalist and a broadcaster and I wouldn't last five minutes in the cesspit that is the National Party or indeed any political party. Um, Sean just looked up Niwa's website and the front page is dedicated to dissing Ian Wishart's investigation. Yeah, but they don't have the balls, Bruce, to come on here. We're going to give them another crack today and then we'll deep dive on the lies they've been telling. Uh, Sean, thank God for Ian Wishart putting the investigative and investigative journalist the problem and real damage with Cyclone Gabriel was the slash from the carbon credit farming. The Greenies and MSM are trying to deflect from the truth. They sure are. Sean Niwa clearly has the rainfall ticks. <laughs> yes, John, not the rainbow tick.